got to say, you're in for a journey if you decide to uh, build this. I started putting some finishing on. I'm using uh, a dark mahogany. And, well, let me just put it this way. If you're ready to be challenged to put something together, this kit is for you because many of the pieces are not numbered on the sheets that they come on. You have to look at a plan, at, at the plan printed off, and even then some of the numbers are not legible to match up. It's going to be quite the trick to get it done. So let me show you what I've done so far inside, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to completely finish this ship because the instructions are that poor. I didn't expect numbered step-by-step -step directions, but I, I expected more of a, a photo or a drawing with a matching number a little bit clearer than what this is going to be. So let me show you where I'm at, and I hope you'll still choose to follow along. The first thing that I did is I took all the parts, and if I could identify what it was, I put it in a, a plastic bag. I put what page in the Word document that they provided with the kit, put what page number this would be found on. So I started out that way and did numerous ones, and these I'm, I'm still hanging on to, but it just became too confusing. So then the next step I went to was trying to figure out where everything went, and that's where I ran into problems. For example, this is the the bones of the ship but to identify all those parts was on a piece of paper this big and some of the numbers uh, you just can hardly read now I realize I'm getting older but then the next problem I ran into is I went online and found some instructions and I discovered that there are several different versions of this ship and some are a little bit different, especially when it comes to the, the hull. Remember, this is the one that has the open side, so it is completely different. So it has taken me probably two full eight-hour days just to begin to get some of this organized. So, off of a small piece of paper like this, some of the numbers I was able to decipher. So I took masking tape, and put the numbers on, or if I had a question, I'd put a little question mark beside it because I literally could not read it. And that was by, you know, both enlarging the photograph or the, the picture or the drawing, or shrinking it down and trying looking at it with a magnifying glass. Probably 80% I've gotten identified, but that 20% is going to be something else. I finally found a photo in the instructions that showed which ones of these cross members had a little notch. And I do have them in the correct placing now, so that was critical. After a lengthy period of time trying to get this to work out, I finally have all the members in place and the center braces. The best clue I can give is, and I'll call it a notch, it sticks out just a little bit on a few of these. Okay, there's one of these little notches, I'll call them, on number seven, number nine, let's see it right there, number nine, number eleven, and then fourteen. Fourteen was easy because it's a unique shaped piece. The center area here is what caused me problems, but it let me know that I didn't have these in the proper order. The front segment has a little angle cut to it. You can see it under here. That's mark number 17. Only one of the two are marked, but they're beside each other. The back two are number 18. Again, only one of them is marked. And not marked at all are these two center supports. And they were the ones that were actually telling me that I didn't have these in the proper order. Once you get all those in the proper place, then the, all these center braces will uh, fit properly. The other thing that you can notice is, I think, 
these they're a little bit different in size and they go out until you get to the center point and then they start going back in so if you if it doesn't do that you don't have it set up right the next step was to put the lower flooring in or the lower deck prior to doing that I did take the knife and I deepened these grooves in the wood it was recommended in the instructions to do that and uh, I'm glad that I did it it shows up better now and even if you don't stay exactly online that just adds to the authenticity of the ship so this did slip in easily from the open side now I will work on getting it secure so going from the back of the ship forward you can get an idea what it looks like Okay, once the floor is in place and I have glued it, just not where any of these are, just in between. So now what you're going to do is turn the ship upside down and we're going to work on these other, the other side. And these are all numbered and they are actually numbered for once. It starts with one and it fits in a little cut out right there. Then, this is part 6D, one of the two are marked, but, and then these will glue right in here. And that will hold that in place. But again, you want to try and maneuver it so it's straight. So that's going to take some work. And then, again, these are all marked. These are one, two, through seven, I believe. I'm just going to set them in place so you get an idea. And then I'll work on getting glued in place. So I think that gives you the idea. Now obviously I have some sanding work to do here to get these little, where they were connected, sanded off, so I'll sand that smooth. But these will get glued in place. Then also there's a step where there's a finished product that goes here, you can see these little notches. So after these get glued and set up, that'll be the next step. This open side where I'm putting these pieces in, I'm thinking the goal would be to have it close to smooth here, although these do stick out a little bit. But that is my goal. So for this I'm using a little wood glue. I'm doing one side at a time. This happens to be piece number seven. It's the last in this series. I need to prop this up here. This one I'm gonna let be a little bit raised because these two are raised. Just pushing these down into place. While this is all drying, I can start getting ready to prepare for the part that, uh, the finished part that goes along the bottom edge and it's on this segment there are some numbers on there you can't really see them and this is the little piece of paper 
that identifies each piece also. Following the numbers off this sheet, this is number one, and it goes at the back of the ship. Then number two, Then number three goes back to the back of the ship. And then four and five will fit in here and they're still on the placard. Here's the finished product on this edging that I talked about. It's all been glued in place now. And uh, it's kind of a dovetail connection that they use in all these places. That's all in place. This is the underside. Everything's been glued. And the lower floor level is in place. And even though I sounded pretty discouraged in the beginning, I'm a little bit more enthusiastic now. I've got things figured out, well under control. Still a lot of work ahead. Next segment will be titled uh, part three and I think I'll get into building the rooms and things that go on top of this floor. I hope you'll stay tuned and I hope you subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.